Today we're going to talk about pecs and the pecs we're using to attach our radiators, our 1880s radiators, to our pex manifold. So we're using pex out pecs instead of regular pecs for this install. And why are we doing that? Because pex out pecs is a multi layer tubing and it's comprised of three layers. And you can see in this picture you've got the outside orange layer, you've got the inside white layer, and those are both pecs. And then you can see a thin layer between them, which is aluminum. It's like aluminum foil. It's the aluminum that gives it its benefits. Because of the aluminum, the pecs out pecs expands less than regular pecs at high temperatures and we're using high temperatures here in this particular situation. The aluminum also helps the pecs to hold its shape. So this is really nice because you can make straight sections and curved sections. You can straighten out sections, you can move sections and after you do that the pec stays in place. So it's really nice for that. Um, the only, if you want to call it a downside, is that the PEX out PEX must be approved connectors and fittings, and they're not standard fittings, they're compression fittings. So, here are the compression fittings we're going to use. And uh, since we're doing half inch tubing, all the compression fittings are half inch. Uh, first, we have elbows. So, the only place where we're going to be using elbows is for the radiators that go to the second floor. We're going to have feeds running on, in the basement to the sections where existing steel pipe goes to the radiator on the second floor. Inside that steel pipe we're going to put in a each pipe's going to get one piece of Pexal Pex inside and when it comes to the basement the piece from the manifold and the piece from the radiator are going to get tied together with the elbow. At the radiator end we're going to be putting these compression uh, fittings with male thread adapters on them. Uh, these will be tied into brass couplings which will be connected to nipples and to radiator elbows which we'll see coming up. And then lastly we have the compression coupling. Now you want to keep these to a minimum. Um, they're basically fixes for mistakes. So but you want to have a few hanging around just in case. So for instance say you're pulling the tubing and you're trying to make a bend and you're trying to bend the tubing and it, you end up crimping it or kinking it, I should say kinking it. You can take the kink out by cutting it out and putting the compression coupling in its place. Alright, so what's what do we need to do to connect this uh, PEX to the radiators? Well, you can see in this radiator, it's got a big hole at the bottom. And that's, there's one on each side of the radiator. One's for the supply or hot water, and the other one's for the return or the cold water, if you want to call it that. In addition, each radiator has a very small hole someplace near the top, which is used for a bleeder, an air bleeder. So here's the first thing we're going to do is we need to put in bushings and um, in our build some of the radiators have a one inch threaded hole and some have a one and a quarter inch threaded hole and so we need the required bushing to then downsize it down to half inch and then the radiator elbows will be attached to the bushing and you can see that in this picture we have uh, radiator elbow 
attached to a bushing and you can also see a nipple connected to the vertical part of the elbow and then lastly we need for the radiators bleeders and the bleeders we chose are these very simple inexpensive bleeders which can be opened with the key which you see there which is very inexpensive by a by a few of those that have them hanging around and uh, or a, our flat blade screwdriver something simple and but you're only going to do this once a year is bleed them unless you got problems all right so what do we need to connect the radiators to the pecs so didn't want the pecs showing and having it go right up into the radiator elbow we want the pecs to be stay below the floor so the first thing we put on was half inch nipples and as you can see that's going that's off the radiator elbow and is going under the floor so there we put in a brass coupling under the floor and then we attached the compression fitting male adapter a uh, threaded adapter to the coupling and so for the first floor it was great nice and easy uh, and the second floor which this particular elbow uh, radiator is the pecs didn't come up on each side of the radiator it came up in, in the floor in one corner and then had to be one side had to be routed to the other side of the radiator so on the second floor the brass elbows were used to help um, direct the nipple from the elbow the, the uh, radiator elbow under the floor to go horizontal so that the pecs could be connected to it horizontally so what are the tools we need to connect it all the compression fittings you really the the two 10 inch adjustable wrenches gives you uh, just the right amount of torque to tighten these down to a nice tight connection and you're going to be using both at the same time and then pipe wrenches you need pipe wrenches um, we need pipe wrenches for the bushings and also for the couplings and we don't want to put a pipe on the nipples at all whether it's pliers or the pipe wrenches because that'll scratch the nipple and then finally you're going to need to get the radiator um, elbows onto the radiator you're going to need this radiator valve spud wrench and as you can see in this particular picture one of, there, there's two of them there but one's broken on the tip the uh, half inch um, radiator valves and uh, elbows are uh, are small so you're just using the tip of that particular spud wrench all right and then for the pecs we need to be able to make nice 90 degree or perpendicular straight cuts so you need a pex cutter the black one on the right is the actual cutter we use and then you're going to need a reamer the reamer goes inside the pex it helps to straighten the pex out make it nice and round it also gives you a chamfer on the outside and the inside of the pex which allows the compression fitting to slide in to the pex nice and easy so we also needed thread sealant for all the threads hangers we used uh, four inch hangers and two inch hangers that was to hold the bundles and then uh, areas where we didn't need hangers plastic pipe clamps came in perfect uh, they're actually split so they wrap around the tubing so you can put them on after the tubing's in place 
and then use uh, pan head screws nice and flat you don't want to use uh, drywall type screws because of the shape of them they'll break the plastic so what did we use at the head end or the distribution wall well, the main location where all the radiators feed to well we're talking about the PEX manifolds and these particular manifolds I like these because they include everything with them when you buy them so for instance the shutoff valves the two valves on the left hand side they're color coded and they both include thermometers and the thermometers come in handy so that you know how hot the water is going into the manifold and how much cooler the water is coming out of the manifold then the other nice thing about the uh, the hot uh, supply side of the manifold is they have these flow valves on the top which allow you to see how well the water is flowing through the radiators and through the manifolds and then on the cold side is where the shutoff valves are so this is a valve that you use to open the water up so that the water flows through the radiator but it can also be used to adjust the flow so with in conjunction with the flow valve you can use that to adjust the flow if you need to and then the other thing that's really nice about these setups is they include all the compression fittings you need for all the ports makes it nice and easy to hook it up everything's there and then finally I just thought you'd like to get a quick look at the uh, the floor plan of the house that we've done this work in now this is the first floor front of the house and you can see that the radiators are highlighted by two red arrows so there's one in the office and there's one in the TV room then we go back to the center of the house and we've got a large dining room a billiard room a small dining room and a, and a living room and there's a number of radiators there and then in the back of the house we have the butler pantry which has a radiator the, the kitchen has a radiator that's a big radiator and then in the tool room in the kitchen bath is actually one uh, baseboard radiator the new style copper tubing with fins on it which uh, does not hold any heat at all as soon as the system shuts off that radiator gets cold now we go to the second floor these are the radiators that are, that are because the pipes from the basement go all the way up to the second floor and they're side by side when they get to the top of the uh, when they get to the floor of the second floor we then have to go under the floor to the other side of the radiator so that's where we're going to need elbows uh, to make the um, pack go where we want it to go and connect to the radiator so here we have four bedrooms on the front um, second floor and then the uh, back second floor we've got four more bedrooms uh, a living room two baths and a hall this is one of the coldest days that we've had it's actually snowing out it's still October it's about 35 38 degrees now well, it's still snowing so hmm. but this is the coldest that we've had since we got the heating system up and running so we only got a few more radiators to install the one that we're just showing in the pink room as we call it whoops as you can hear the boiler is running right now but here's our manifold system see if I can get to the spot where you don't 
see so much of the hot water tank here. Alright. That's the first and second floors. Zone one, zone two. And then over here we have the apartment. That's zone three. And then zone four is our hot water tank. Right here. And you can see from the the pictures we had before, all the pipe, all that pipe is gone. Now I can walk around. Where did we put the zone controller? Up here, next to a light. Right there. And then it's just fed over to the circulators. So all the thermostats can access the zone controller easily and um, from you can easily see it, what zone is running. Right now zone 2 is running which is the second floor. Zone 2 is this one. Let's see. Turn this light down. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, it's off. So that's his Zone 2 or second floor. There's 10 radiators on that. Okay, here's the one I did back in December. So the uh, okay, so I'd have to go this way to loosen that up. All right. Okay, we got this radiator disconnected, and we we're able to get the nipple out on this side. And we got the valve disconnected. And one of the things I noticed is that it appears that the pipe is here. I can't I can't seem to get it. Let's see, where's the light on this? Anyways, the pipe's going at an angle right here. It looks like that's this pipe, yeah. So, and does that mean that th that one too is going over here or going like this? There's nothing, this is above the billiard room, so there's nothing in the billiard room as far as pipes go. Is this one of those rare ones that they actually put it inside the wall? Which would be in the bathroom off the billiard room? I don't know. Probably get more once I uh, take this P 
piece of wood up, see what's underneath. This is the one, this radiator came from the bedroom where there was two radiators. So it's a good size radiator, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, another, it's another 14. And uh, this used to have a small radiator. So this would probably work good in this room. This is north side and uh, so, but what's interesting about this particular radiator this is over the billiard room and what we're finding is as we're trying to open up the floor to find out how to get pipes in here the pipes that were here actually are the only ones in the house that go through it's right there you can see the cut the angle cut and then it goes down those are the only ones that went in the walls how they put them in the walls, I have no idea. What we found is, in this room, this floor is a very thin, looks like quarter inch, I didn't really measure it. Oh, I'll show you. Ow. It's a hard wood, and that's how thick it is. Not very thick, and it's very, what is it, about an inch and a half wide. And it must have taken forever for these to be installed. But they're not tongue and groove, they just sit flat on the floor. And I believe they just every now and then put in a, a nail, uh, like a finished nail, but you can't even see them. But when you're pulling them up, you did find uh, one. Then underneath it is subfloor, which is tongue and groove, which is what we found in most of the house. Then over that, it looks like a two by. A two by right here that's tongue and groove. So, however, I don't think the piece that was, I don't remember, I don't think that piece was there. But this is where it was chopped out for the pipe to go from here to here to go up into the radiator. So now this PEX is running up the chase for the Get into the, this bathroom off the billiard room, and here's the. Uh, I don't have a light. You can see the outline of the pecs there. That's what's going up into the pink room. So we'll be uh, attaching that and then boxing that up. vent system for uh, the plumbing vent system for the sewer and it's going in that same chase through the bathroom that's next to the billiard room so once we put a box around that you won't see the, this and uh, so it looks like we're gonna have plenty of room here we had a gal we had to create a trough here but it looks good because what you see here is what looks like another subfloor, but actually it's the ceiling of the billiard room. The ceiling of the billiard room is beadboard, tongue and groove beadboard. And then this here is a massive beam. It's eight inches wide and probably taller and they're located like every 24 or more inches apart in the uh, in, in the floor so i think we're going to be okay though running the the uh, the pecs won't, don't have to drill through it run the pecs over it and that'll be good so I'll, I'll show you in, on the uh, billiard room what the ceiling looks like. And finally, here's the 
ceiling of the billiard room and you can see the bead board okay and then these are beams that are covered but you can see how wide they are so if we go this is bathroom if we go over here this is where the radiator is in the pink room it's going to be in this section so be, part of it be over here on this side of the beam and then the other parts over here so with the flooring removed or the piece of wood that we're going to have the radiator sit on removed we can see all right there's our pecs we want to pick that up on this side and we can see um, where we got a circle from the uh, hole above and that is going to be where our pecs has to come out so let's take a look remove that and it looks like it's over the beam too so we might have to notch that two by a bit okay okay we remove we move the radiator away from the wall and I put the board down as I stand in front of the light and have shadows and we're gonna mark we're gonna drill a, a drill we're gonna just take a pencil and pencil mark the uh, round circle there and then once we do that we're gonna find the center of that and we're gonna drill a hole with this bit with this bit here I got so much light with that bit it's a Forstner bit so it just chews through the wood today's a, a new day it's uh, near the end of October 2020 and we actually have huh, it's too bright uh, we've got snow we got snow coming down anyways here's our uh, radiator that we're working on um, this one presents problems because the pipes are not in the floor and they're coming out of the wall uh, but again because of the way uh, as you saw earlier the it is underneath the floor we don't really have a lot of flexibility uh, fortunately the PEX is somewhat flexible and it holds its position, but you got to be careful on how much you actually bend it because you can kink it. So if you kink it, you got to cut it off and then splice in a piece at that point. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the radiator off and uh, put the other board on, find out where the hole is, and drill a hole and take a look at where we stand uh, underneath. Okay, so here the PEX is coming out of the floor uh, where the pipes are coming up from the dining room. The other, uh, when the radiator was installed before, there was a bunch of elbows bringing the pipes to behind the radiator. With the pecs, I don't need to do that. I'm just going to come out like that and feed the radiator. And obviously, we've got to fix the floor. We had to take the floor apart to find out what was going on, which was already apart. The the pipe at one time for the ra this particular radiator, this radiator was actually over here where this dresser is in the corner, and uh, that's actually over a porch. So that this is the board that we used to sit on, and that's where the hole was for one of the pipes to come up. So. It's been moved over to here, which is now in over the inside of the house. 
Um, this particular one, instead of sitting on a whole board, is just sitting on a couple of pieces of hardwood like that. That one needs to be moved over a little bit. But the floor needs to be fixed up, so that has to be done. Well, the heating upgrade is winding down, and uh, this is one of the last radiators that we installed or had to put pec or put pecs on it. The radiator that was in this room has been moved to the hallway and a smaller radiator was put in this room which you can see where this candle is that's where the one of the pipes went so this radiator blocked the window and was huge for this room. This room's on the south side of the house and it's got a lot of windows, yes, but it also gets a lot of heat when it's sunny out. So, uh, the, these pipes come up from the dining room. And uh, so we ran the PEX inside the pipes and fed it under the floor where the pipes were before one pipe came out of here and then went into here and hence the rag there so we did it that way we'll put a this just needs a piece of wood to cover it something that you can use to you know a couple of screws to hold it down but it'll be uh, you're not going to walk there because this is a closet and it's the where you're hanging your clothes, so you're not going to walk there. Uh, it's just, um, although you want something to support you, but just a couple of screws so it doesn't move. And if you ever have to get in there, you just zip the screws out. We have uh, pipes here. Those go up to the third floor. Uh, located on the second floor used to be in one of the bedrooms. One bedroom had two large radiators. So this is a good size radiator. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen sections. And the radiator that used to be in the hall was the small, small radiator, which is actually this radiator over here in this room. So that used to be in the hall. So you can see that the board that it's sitting on was a lot larger. So the radio that was in here was a lot larger. But we put in this large radio in the hall. And I think it's actually going to be a good idea because even though it's going to put out more heat, this hall's long. And then if you open up the bedrooms, It'll just help to uh, heat everything up. So I think it's going to be okay. It's been, it seems to have been okay so far. But we're in October, so although tomorrow they're talking about it snowing, eh, it'll be interesting. October is early for us for snow. Usually we might, uh, well, some of the mountain areas, mountainous or hilly hillside areas will get snow, but uh, usually it just melts right away. Um, I would say late November and December is when it's a good possibility to get snow. Anyways, that's another story. Alright, here the radiator is installed, however it needs to be filled. So right away, that's what need, and then tested for leaks, so hopefully we don't have any leaks. That's the thing that's been scary about these old radiators, uh, but so far it's not too bad. We've had a few, but that's always a pain in the tushy, because that means we have to shut the zone off, drain the radiator, 
and then disconnect it. So, all right. Um, it was definitely interesting getting, installing these uh, nipples on the radiator unions. This particular one, I actually put the pipe together with the board in the middle. <laughs> and then I was able to put the radiator in place and then tie them together. This one, although the hole looks pretty good, it's actually underneath has been oblonged out so that I could bend the, put the parts in, bend it into place. Um, so that was, uh, that was definitely a pain in the tushy. Um, actually had to lift the radiator higher on this side so I could get the board to slide underneath because the, the this pipe here is attached to the uh, PEX and then the PEX was underneath so it was uh, difficult to slide it back in. Alright. So now we just gotta fill it and test it for leaks. How you doing? So we've come to the end of this system being in, upgraded and uh, it's been running for two years. All the radiators are connected to the manifolds. Um, all the radiators on the first floor and second floor are connected. And they're all working well. The third floor is not connected, uh, but it hasn't been connected in a long time. However, we could uh, connect those radiators at some point. We, the pipes going from the basement to the third floor are still in place. So did we accomplish our goals is a good question. You, before, you couldn't even access the boiler if you had to work on it. It was, well, probably banging your head on some pipe. There was pipes everywhere. And... Uh, so also, how much water is in all those pipes besides the pipes weighing a lot, a lot. Um, so, you know, the boiler, it would just turn on and it would r push water through all those pipes every time it turned on. That's a lot of water. So I think... Um, we probably accomplished that. The PEX is a lot lighter. And as you can see here, every radiator can be uh, adjusted individually. So that's pretty cool. And so did we have any problems? Uh, yep. We had um, a couple of radiators that had some uh, drips and when I designed how to connect the hot water heater to the distribution board, I made a mistake. So what was that mistake? Well, let's take a look at here in this picture, the, the uh, tank has been pulled away, it's disconnected from the system, and we're getting ready to hook the tank back up to the uh, distribution board. So we have to add a zone four regulator. And here's here's a picture of, uh, yeah, the, the left one is zone three, and the right one is zone four. So here's where the problem came up. This is the zone four regulator, uh, regulator circulator hooked up to the hot water tank um, but you'll notice in this section here this is actually an area where air can collect and that's what happened air collected the uh, circulator ran dry and overheated burned out so this is what did is 
I moved this circulator from zone 3 to zone 4. We installed a new circulator in zone 3, just like zones 1 and 2, a 3-speed uh, circulator with a chuck valve in it. And then, finally, up here at the top, we installed an air vent. So design, changed the design there so that we had a way to capture the air and then get rid of the air. And this is what the air vent looks like. And that was also, we needed to put a new one in on this particular hot water tank. I don't think all hot water tanks have air vents, but this one, the way it heats up the hot water, it's got a place where air can go. So right there on the hot water tank, right in the center is an air vent. So that one wasn't working, so we put a new one in there. And then finally, they added this SpiroVent air eliminator. And that's an automatic air eliminator. So it, uh, if there, any air gets built in, or if you're getting any air, it's going to get rid of it right away. So we had a couple of radiators that needed to be fixed. And this is one where uh, it's leaking right where the split is. And this is how we fixed it. Uh, as I recall, Liam did this uh, with Alicia. And as I recall, um, the, a vacuum cleaner was involved. And I think it was JD Weld. And so I think what what do you hook up the vacuum cleaner to it? And it sucked the JB, JB, not JD, <laughs> JB Weld into the crack. Anyways, it fixed it. That one's working. And then what would I do differently? Well, before I started putting anything on these pieces of plywood, a backboard, I would have painted or stained them. That's for sure. So I want to thank everybody that was involved in doing all this work. So we moved all these pipes in the basement and crawl space. So Joanna helped me do a lot of that. Liam helped. Dan and his friend helped with a couple of four inch pipe sections. They were like 10 feet long, but like four inches or more, and they were wicked heavy. And uh, Joanne and I couldn't do it. And then Liam was working all the time in the crawl space. And when we saw the packs, he was involved in doing the packs, connecting the packs from the, uh, uh, the horizontal runs to the runs going to the second floor putting elbows in uh, in the crawl space so that's that must have been pretty hard and then of course also connecting up some radiators and then Liam got into learning how to fix the radiators so that's uh, he's, and, and he's learning more and more and I think uh, the last one he, he split it apart so that's pretty cool and then to make the, the radiators look nice, they had to be cleaned and painted. And uh, so Alicia, Mel, Laura, and Joanna were involved in doing that. All right. Awesome.